doing this, take my mask off, let's go. There we go. Oh, it's leaking everywhere. Hey, look at this, caught on camera. Oh my God, I got, I got one of those wonky cups. Good start. <laughs> everybody and welcome to uh, one of my videos and today I'm going to be talking uh, with someone who's had COVID and is still dealing with COVID and uh, she's very happily uh, accepted my invitation to come and talk about her experience with COVID and we want to try and get the message across to people who still don't believe that COVID is real and, it, and it's not serious and uh, I, I just can't stress enough how serious this is and it's actually nice to be able to speak to someone who has actually had this problem and he's still dealing with it uh, because you don't hear about much of this stuff in the media it's always either the dead or the asymptomatic or we just don't hear about them so it's actually nice to speak to someone who's actually had it and still dealing with it so without further ado i'm going to introduce you to the person i'm going to be speaking to <laughs> hi rachel hi nigel how are you doing good thanks hi. for having me today oh thanks very much <laughs> thanks for coming you're more than welcome yeah uh, great um so I don't really know where to start because I've never really done an interview before. So this is quite new for me as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I have written a few questions down. Um, we'll just go by your first name and that's all we're going to say yep. uh, for your own privacy. Uh, I just want to make it quite clear that Rachel is a real person and uh, she's not an actor. She's not paid to do this. This is someone who actually has had this and it's been vouched for by several other people. So it is legit. Let's start at the beginning. Hmm. Uh, how did you know before the test, I should say, that you may have contracted COVID-19 uh, and what were the telltale signs? Yeah, well, um, I had a headache for two days and it was a headache that I'd never experienced before. And I'm somebody that suffers from migraines. Um, and it was definitely different. It, it felt like my whole brain was affected and it was swollen. But at that point, I, I wasn't making the connection. Um, and then until two days later when I woke up and I had a sore throat and I had a fever. And at that point, I knew. Right. Yeah, I now, knew. Now take us back, now when was this? This was, if this I'm was, right, was it uh, April or May? April, right? around April 16th. Around about April, so right, mm -hmm. around about that time is when things were really, we just got into lockdown what, three or four weeks earlier. Yeah. It was really at the height where the numbers were really sparring out of control. Uh, it was still very new to everyone what mm -hmm. was going on. Yeah. You went for a test, um, mm -hmm. and how long did you have to wait for the result? Well, when I kind of had that gut instinct that I had COVID, it was nearing the weekend, and at that point we didn't have the walk-in clinics. So, and it uh, kind of when I knew it was already too late in the day for me to get a hold of my family physician or public health. So I kind of had to suffer through the weekend. I had fevers the entire weekend, absolutely miserable. The headaches were still with me. Um, so come Monday, uh, I had call, I called my physician who then told me to call public health to make the appointment. Public health was excellent. Uh, they booked me an appointment on the Wednesday had my swab and then by the Friday I had my results but all said and done from onset of symptoms was April 16th to April 24th is when I tested positive right and then also was also the, the day I was the most sick how did you feel health wise at that time after being tested positive what, what, what was your health like was it deteriorating it was I, I felt like garbage um, I was testing my oxygen which I did maintain that the entire time, but my chest, at that point, I knew something was going on in my chest. And uh, at that point, even I called ahead to, to the hospital um, and actually ended up taking myself into the hospital because wow. I, I felt so sick and I was scared. Yeah. I was absolutely scared. I can imagine. Yeah. So how quickly did you go from virtually nothing to your pneumonia? You felt it, it took about eight days. Eight days. You know, and it was. I was having like eight days of fever. And so onset of symptoms again was the 16th. And then it was the 24th when I got my results and, and felt like I was in trouble and that it was wow. in my chest. How would you describe your condition at the worst point of it? Mm, absolutely fatigued. Um, just not being able to do much not being hungry. The fevers were almost 24 seven. There would be about a break of an hour break in, um, in a 24 hour period of the fever where that's when I would try to hydrate and, and eat. And then that fever would come back. Right. And it would be the worst in the middle of the night around two or three. I would just, 
be so tired and burning up with fever and restless, couldn't sleep. Um, and the only relief I could get was because I'd also have the chills from the fevers. I would just literally lay in my shower and sleep in my shower wow. for a couple hours at a time yeah. until I ran out of hot water. And I would do that every night. So I'm just going to go off some, I think people mm -hmm. might just be down. In comparison then to, because a lot of people come, uh, always say oh, it's just like a flu symptom. Mm -hmm. And it's not. I, I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. But the, the, your early onset symptoms would be similar until you got the full blown pneumonia and the chest infection. So you would say this is far, far worse than oh, a, a, a bad dose of flu? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the flu is, is rapid. When you get the flu, you get your fever and usually within a couple hours onset of symptoms, you know you've got your, your, you get your runny nose and stuff and that fever usually subsides and then you also usually get over the flu really quick and this is, I'm also speaking from a standpoint of living through H1N1 and I believe in 2009 right. where my sister got it, tested positive right. and pretty sure that I had it as well. Um, where the symptoms were rapid onset, but then within even a few days, you were already starting to feel better. This is way different. Wow. You just, it seems like you get sicker and sicker and sicker over like a one week to two week period. So, so knowing how uh, bad you became ill, uh, how would you describe your health uh, prior to COVID? Because um, we hear a lot of people people have underlying issues mm -hmm. and things like that. Are you known to have had any underlying issues health-wise? Because to me, you look like yeah. a very healthy, normal person in the early 40s to yeah. me, so. No, just typical 40s stuff, uh, thyroid uh, issue and just uh, general acid reflux. Right, okay. Which is quite typical yeah, yeah. in your 40s for it's a lot of people. Typical for a lot of people in the 30s that you've had yeah. as well. So, yeah. yeah, and I mean, I was quite active before. I, I stand up paddleboard, I go on walks daily, I beach comb as a hobby. So, so yeah, it's actually, person overall. oh, you're absolutely. Outdoor, you're an outdoor person. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Very outdoors person. How mm -hmm. would you uh, describe the next few, how were the next few weeks after, for you after you tested uh, negative? Uh, still very tired, um, but I thought my body had just deconditioned from the couple of weeks spent in bed trying to recover. Yeah. So I thought I was on the path to recovering and that my body was getting better. Um, that kind of all changed when I tried to go back to work and twice I tried to go back to work and the second time I tried to go back to work, I believe it was in June, I actually ended up in the emergency department with, with chest pain and difficulty breathing. I was sweating. Um, it's all being related back to COVID? Well, it's hard to say, but when we went through the whole workup of checking out my heart, there was nothing underlying and my heart was, because we were worried um, it could have affected my heart, because it does yes. do affect a lot of um, COVID patients. Um, they'll get like a myocarditis or I don't know the terminology, but um, it lends up affecting their heart. And so we did the whole workup for that. And my heart is actually impeccable, is what wow. I was told. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Um, so no underlying condition there. And so the cardiologist is, it's most likely from COVID, but we, you know, we can't say for a hundred percent certainty because everything is so new. That's right. But, Everyone seems to forget that it is mm -hmm. a new virus. It's less than a year old and we're still studying. Every day the mm -hmm. news changes because a new study comes out or they've had more time to analyze the data. Uh, it's always something happening. And that's why a lot of people can't grasp as well, is like they keep referring things back to influenza, which we've been studying for over a hundred years. Yes. Whereas this type of coronavirus, the COVID strain, uh, which is part of the SARS family, uh, which most of us all know now, is it's, it's new and it's always evolving. And we don't know where it's gonna go to next. It's now been several months uh, since you had COVID, how is your daily life like mm -hmm. right now compared to what it would have been this time last year even? Well, I'm somebody that would go for walks every day. I can still walk, but um, I get very short of breath just when I'm walking and talking. Right. And it's not even something I'm aware of until all of a sudden I'm, I'm trying to grasp for breath. So that's unfortunate. I'm noticing like, I'm, I kind of always feel like I'm in a haze or a fog. It's like I'm panting, I'm panting, panting. and I'm like, oh, I can't catch my breath. Right. And, and the other big thing is I feel like I can't take a deep breath. Which has always been yeah. said, if you, if you think you have COVID, if, if you get any shortness of breath, that's when you've really got to get seen to by a physician mm -hmm. as soon as possible. So the degree of pneumonia that I had, 
Um, I was told it was actually like a pretty stable pneumonia and then I was reassured because I was doing my own oxygen levels. Right. They, they gave me a plan of action. Oh, okay. um, but it was interesting to note that um, that first time I ended up in the hospital and the second time I ended up in the ER, I also had um, imbalances with my electrolytes as well which is very interesting. So my potassium was actually too low, which is a critical electrolyte in your body for right. most, most functioning. So I don't know why that happened because in June at that point, I had my regular appetite. So it was just interesting to see that. And I know potassium can be related to kidney function. I've heard that about the, the there's also been a few stories now about kidneys issues as well mm -hmm. uh, going down so it really does seem to be attacking like we said earlier on like the main organs within mm -hmm. the body as it goes down the mm -hmm. uh, the respiratory is it respiratory yeah, tract and absolutely. makes its way into your into your body see i'm not a doctor i don't know these yeah <laughs> no so, and i you know i've done a lot of reading and it, i think it's there's similar cells in different parts of your body that react the same that are in your lungs right. so that's why they can end up getting affected too they have the same receptor as you just said, you're still having issues with shortness of breath. Uh, what would you, are you doing anything to counteract that in any way or try and work around it in any way? Exercises, uh, special, is there anything that is being done? Yeah, just pacing myself, but still trying to stay active. And I do have a referral to a respirologist. So I'm kind of curious at this point to see what's, if there's still anything going on. I know back in June, my chest X-ray, like the right side of my lung was still affected. It wasn't a pneumonia anymore, but I don't know that it's um, detailed enough to, to, to show if it's actual long-term damage or temporary damage. Now, what, what would you say to someone who is doubting that this is real in any way, or oh, there are anti-masks? Is there anything you could say to these people which... Absolutely, yeah. Lear learn where you're getting your information from. I, I've learned to get my information from actual science and research literature based on hardy, hardy mechanisms for conducting the research. Um, yeah, where it's unbiased, they, the research is being done not with um, the hope of getting a specific answer, but just to get whatever the correct answer is. So I know a, a lot of people don't have access to um, some of the research that's difficult to gain access to yeah. without like a membership. Um, but you can still get a lot of information just by doing your research on Google Scholar. Now, is there anything else you want to add before we uh, wrap it up? I mean, if it's your time to say something to the people out there, the Niagara region. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Putting you right on the spot. I had, <laughs> no, I had something, but I already forget it. Forget we can wait it. a minute. We can just edit this bit yeah, out. You yeah, know, I try, I try to make after. things a little bit funny at times. <laughs> you, can't, you can't all be doom and gloom, right? <laughs> I do think masks work. I, so I you would, can do masks. Yes. Right? If I move to this end of this camera, I'm going to put a video right here. I found this on TikTok. I just thought of this. I'm going to put it right here. And I'll show you the full video actually at the end of this. But you'll see the guy. He's got this air compressor. And he's trying different masks with water. And he's got a lighter. And mm -hmm. it's really, really good. Unfortunately, there is some swearing in it, but I'll play the whole thing after we've done this whole video. But this is this is it here, and I'll play it in its entirety uh, when we finish this as a wrap-up. I just thought of that then, because I remember, yeah, yeah I downloaded yeah. it. Yeah, really. that's a good video. Clip. And I did just remember, um, despite having COVID, I'm afraid of getting it again. I still do all the measures. I we don't have the enough research to know if I have antibodies or not. I, I and, did want to ask you that. I yeah, completely forgot about and, that. That is one thing I did, but I didn't write it down. Yeah, yeah. If we if we take the numbers or the research from SARS one, I believe what is that, two thousand and three? Two two and three, yeah. Two thousand and three. Um, the average person only had antibodies for six months. So we can't let our guard down even if we've already had it before. I'm I'm almost at the six month point now. Yeah where I'm afraid I might get it again. I'm not sure if it would hit me harder. As you can see, I'm not wearing a mask right now. I chose to take mine off beginning this interview. Uh, Rachel is keeping hers on. The reason why I haven't got mine on, the wind is actually blowing directly down there. So if I say anything, you're like, there goes my paper. It's, it's like we're, we're, we're a good four feet away, not six, but we're a good four or five feet away. But the wind is blowing directly down from here. So nothing I say is going right over there. Mm -hmm. So I feel comfortable. Rachel feels comfortable as well in that as well. So there we go. That's there's actually that. a lot the of evidence. The video recorded oh. exceed the fogger. It was split into two files. That's oh, good. that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, but right. it's not a joke. I'm I'm not a crisis actor. Yeah. It is incredibly heartbreaking 
to see people that thought it was a hoax yeah and then they get it and they're incredibly ill or they've affected a family member and a family member is has passed away there's no joy in that for no. me to see that they've been proven wrong well on that note i think we'll I, th I think I think we said it all, and you said it all, mm -hmm. and I, I thank you very, very much for your time today, thank Rachel. You. It was really, really nice to speak to you and get your side of it. Um, when I post a video, I'm going to ask the people, if you have any questions, Rachel, uh, Rachel does follow me on my YouTube blog. If you have any questions, Rachel, please feel free to ask them in the YouTube co in the uh, comments below, and uh, I'm sure if she doesn't see them, I'll point them out to her so she can reply to you. If you have any questions that y you might want answered yourself, uh, just ask them. Uh, she won't be afraid to uh, type in there and a little chime away, maybe, or she'll pass the answers on via me, and I'll, I'll post them, because, uh, as I say, we don't know Rachel's full identity of her name. Just going by Rachel so it might be best if I, we post you under an alias on the on the YouTube but if you if you want to ask any questions please feel free to if you have any comments on this video please feel free to leave them below and uh, once again Rachel I thank you very much for your time and uh, I wish you all the best in your recovery thank you and hopefully in six months I'll have a more optimistic health update wonderful we'll have to have you back then yep. make sure you're alive and well yeah I will be <laughs> all right wonderful thank you <laughs> thank you